It's almost hard to believe that it's been 10 years since Space Engineers came out. What an amazing game. Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we strive to perfect our engineering. So, at some point I got lost in space, they took out the antenna to the bulbous, and I was not able to find my ship. I had to manually fly all the way back to my asteroid base, which gave me the opportunity to build the Vector. This ship, as you can see, is unique. It can hold up to 12 AI drones. It's fairly streamlined. You only have the cabin that's pressurized, and these AI drones are unfortunately sitting out in the cold. But they're all highly equipped with auto cannons, offensive AI controls, move controls, and a remote control with camera. So if you want to see and check out the action while they're attacking an adversary, you definitely can. The ones on this side, I like to mix it up, and I put Gatling cannons on each one. They're all connected to the same grid and are fairly easy to control. Currently I have them programmed to all react at the exact same time as soon as you disconnect the connectors. Over here we have the small vectors. They are also equipped with auto cannons, or a Gatling cannon, and they can hold two AI drones on top of each other. Now the importance, if you're going to haul an AI drone with another AI drone, make sure that you kill the power on the smaller AI drone after it's connected to your connector. This is pretty easy to do if you set it on a timer block and control it with an event controller. So as soon as it connects, it turns all the power off for the smaller drone, and as soon as it disconnects, it turns it all back on. Well, let's go ahead and close this up and head to our destination. You may run into a few problems here and there using AI with so many different drones and antennas, but for the most part, they do work. For the twins back there, You'll see that initially they follow me, no problem. But as soon as they get pretty close to each other, basically on top of each other, they stop working for some reason, they don't follow anymore. I figured out what you have to do is turn off your collision avoidance. If you turn that off, they'll continue to follow you. But when you do that, make sure that you also set the range in which you want them to follow you just over the amount of space it takes for your ship. Otherwise, I ran into this problem again where the drones tried to get on top of my ship or drastically run into it and I had to repair a few parts here and there. Today we're gonna try to head out to a location I marked where I had a previous battle. And that was with a salvage ship. Unfortunately, its drones were able to take out the antenna on my bulbous. And somehow, I got kicked out of the ship and couldn't find it anymore. So as we head to the salvage attack, you can kind of see the drones in the back there. Their distance will vary and they won't be immediately on top of you, but they will catch up. I set their speed limit to 20 ms. I just so happened to see the bulbous in the distance by the reflected panels from the sun. Not sure how much damage it took during the war, but I definitely know the antenna was knocked out. I'm going to go ahead and pull up closer to it to see if we can assess and figure out if it'll be used in the future or not. Let me just go ahead and pull up next to it over here. You should see the other AI drones, the small vectors, come flying in at some point. As mentioned, it does take them a minute or two just to catch up, depending on how fast you are transversing to the next location.
once they are pretty close, I turn off the basic task of following because I don't want them to continuously follow me around whenever I'm checking out the bulbous ship. If you don't do that, they'll probably get pretty pesky on you and crowd your way. There you go, you can see them kind of sandwiched over here like pancakes. Not too bad, except for I noticed they lost their auto cannons on the sides. I believe that's because of where I put the ion drive for the side motion. I put them a little too close. Hmm, looks like we have one ion drive on fire with this thing. For the most part, it's still intact. There are minor damages here and there, though. Our ten is still there. I had deployed all the drones, so there are no drones in here. And the ship automatically closed the blast doors right afterwards. Looks like the front here took on some damage. Yeah, not going to be able to pressurize. The easiest way to check what kind of components are damaged is to check your terminal. Whatever is in red, like this antenna here, is more than likely damaged and you need to replace the components. But if it's still on the list, at least you still have it. Alright, let's see the ship build area. Everything's intact. But for some reason, looks like there's a block missing or something. I wonder if it got moved during the bustle. Like, that block's not even there at all. Maybe one of the drones took it out? The lower area here. Whoa! I guess that's an uh, excessive hole there. And that's probably why our air conditioning system isn't working anymore. Well, that's a fairly easy fix, but it is all metal that we don't currently have on us. Now that we've seen the extent of the damage, I'm just going to grab a few parts here and there to fix this antenna. It'll make it a lot easier when we go to try to find the bulbous ship again. Because we are going to just simply leave it here until we go and check out the enemy. little bit more there we go it's always good to hit your tab key to show how many elements you still need or components you need to finish the job otherwise you might have a 90 percent built antenna or component and it still doesn't work but it looks mostly finished all right with that taken care of let's aim back for that salvage attack it's only about uh, one and a half kilometers away. Let's see if we can do some real damage to the enemy. You might consider it payback time. Oh wait, before we get that far though, we'll have to reactivate our AI drones. Our small vectors, of course, were not following us, so we had to turn them back on so they'd end up behind us again. Hmm. From here, you'd think we'd see something more obvious for an enemy, but I guess not. Let's detach the smaller micro drones from the small vector drones. And they should automatically take off and search for an enemy if there's an enemy around. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. If you don't turn off the connectors, the magnet power is a little bit too strong for the micro AI drones. They just don't have enough thrust to pull away from it. Make sure to turn off the connectors completely. So you don't shake the heck out of them. Doesn't seem like they activated for some reason. I'm going to have to go back and check my setup after this to see what's going on with them. 
But the small vectors, though, they should automatically search for the enemy and begin attacking. I just have to mark it stop following. The move is on. AI behavior is on. Looks like everything's set up correctly. 300 meters out. And nothing. Well, that's strange. I wonder what the chances are that the enemy disappeared. It has been a while since I've been in this area, so... With Space Engineers, the enemy does repopulate in different places and depopulates in other ones. Yeah, this place looks pretty empty. Okay, so step one of best made plan. Make sure you know where your enemy actually is before you spend a lot of time building ships that can't attack them because they can't find them. Note to self, always update your maps. Yeah, nothing around here. Nothing on the radar. Well, anyway, since we're here, I'll just go ahead and turn these ones on. And if an enemy does show up, they'll easily be able to take them out. I'll also demonstrate, in a sense, how the large vector will release all the other drones. And they're supposed to fly out, but I don't think they will fly out just because there's no enemy around to attack. Yeah, that's, that's kind of disappointing. There's nobody here anymore. Not even a skosh. Not even one darn drone trying to attack us. Anyways, let's go ahead and open the doors, turn on the lights. With this, I have it set up where as soon as you open the doors, turn on the lights, an event controller kicks on and essentially activates all these drones. But as you can see, their thrusters are on, but they're not really doing anything. If we go to this, hmm, that that is on. Ooh, I forgot to set the AI, I think. If you don't set the AI, it cannot actually read it. Turn the collision avoidance off. And there. Now it says it's searching for enemies, but there's no movement. Make sure that also your guns are assigned because that's the direction in which you want to face your enemy. I think that's it. I suppose I missed quite a few small things on here. Wait, why is this on fire now? Ah! Let's see. Yep, oh, nope, nope, there it goes again. Oh, there's the other one. What is going on here? Oh, I think the since the ion drives are on, the drones are not moving. The ion drives are close enough to the auto cannon; it's catching them on fire. We don't see that on the Gatling side, just because the Gatlings are a lot shorter. Let's try to move one of these out of here so it doesn't explode. Whoops. Well, as you can see, my driving skills haven't improved that much. It still moves and everything. Mm, that's kind of a disappointment. Well, I guess that's all I can show you for now. We're going to have to probably visit the basics again of AI drone building just to build that muscle memory of what needs to be set and what doesn't. As always, thanks for watching and please feel free to leave your comments and suggestions in the comments section. I'll be out here scouring space for a new enemy. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.